like you. Pulling together a core team of people that really think public banking is a good idea is a great way to start, and they've done a great job of that here in New Mexico. Shout out again to We Are People here for all of their work in banking for New Mexico. So thanks again, you guys. Check on this one. The second step is to work with your core team and your allies to identify people inside and outside of government think it's a good idea. Here in New Mexico, we obviously have a brilliant example of Mayor Gonzalez and county commissioners and city councilors from Albuquerque and other representatives from the state legislature who think this is a good idea. Pull them in. Help them help you form the process by which you're going to go about exploring a public thing. After that, it's helpful to conduct a study of what the feasibility and impacts of that public bank will be. As you've heard in this conference, that process has started here in Santa Fe with a request for qualifications. I understand that the city has received proposals from several teams composed of people who are experts in banking, experts in law, experts in municipal government and municipal government finance, and others that are willing to help the city move forward with this important initiative. Now, some of the questions you need to ask in a feasibility study are important to think about. First of all, what are the unmet needs that you want to do this for? Public banking sounds like a great idea, but if you're booming and your economy's going great and there's no real unmet needs there, it might be a solution chasing a problem. When we first started working on this in the Vermont legislature, in fact, that's what we heard. What's the problem? Banking services are available to everybody. Banks are having a hard time finding people who are creditworthy to give loans to, and now you're going to put a public institution in place that's likely to compete with them? So what's the problem? What are the needs? And this also speaks to what Michael was talking about in terms of your mission, trying to identify what you want to accomplish with this public bank. What kind of public bank will serve your needs? You've heard just a few of the options here today. There are many different models for public banking. Our institute tends to promote the type that work with public deposits, the large public deposits, in creating these large wholesale banks, essentially, that would work in partnership with your local community and the community chartered banks to offer a lending. But there are a number of different types of public banks that you can explore to meet the different needs that you identify. What capital will be required to meet your needs? How are you going to capitalize the bank? What kind of financing do you need in the public bank you create? What are the city's needs for cash flow? If, after all, if you're putting your public deposits in a bank and you still need to pay the bills that the city has to pay out of that same account, how much money do you need to keep in the bank, essentially, to pay those bills? In Vermont, when we did our study, we found that instead of having the typical 10% cash reserves on hand, in order to make sure that the state treasurer would be able to pay all her bills at any given time, we would need 34% cash reserves on hand to, to maximize the ability of that public bank to both serve the state's needs to pay its bills and to serve the needs for making investments. What are the legal requirements? What are the barriers? Can a city even establish a public bank? in New Mexico? That's an open question. I've heard that since Santa Fe is a charter city, there are some opinions that it's very likely you can. But having come from a long history in municipal government in a variety of different states and countries, I can tell you that my general experience is that cities are creatures of the state. And that if anybody wants to stop a city from doing something at the state level, that is also possible to do. So it may turn out that you need special legislation here or not, but that is a question for the feasibility study to consider. And what are the financial and regulatory requirements? Do you need FDIC approval to have your bank? If you're doing housing lending, you probably do. If you're going to take deposits from individual customers, you certainly do. Because the FDIC is going to be the ones responsible for insuring those deposits. The large public deposits in Vermont, for example, our average daily balance is $350 million. That isn't insured by the FDIC. But the smaller individual and business deposits are. Also, what are the operational requirements? Banking software isn't cheap. 
Banking operations cost money. You want to be able to hire professionals to do the job for you. You want to be able to make sure that you have all of the regulatory procedures in place so that you don't fall afoul of the federal regulators. If you're running a bank, that's an important consideration. So you need to identify how much it's going to cost to run the bank. Now that will also depend in part on your mission and what you try to do with the bank and what you're going to be using the money for. But all of that is an important question to ask in your feasibility study. Now I said that there's a bunch of different types of public banks. You've heard about a few of them today. Another that you heard about earlier is the Community Development Finance Institution, or CDFI. I used to run that institution for the city of Montpelier, Vermont. Banking services for the unbanked is another type of public bank that we heard about postal banks and other type of public banks can, can help provide that service. Economic Development Partnership Bank, another type of public bank. Now these banks tend to be agency type lending banks, or lending institutions, rather than leveraged fractional reserve institutions. They loan out the money that they have rather than being able to offer credit on the basis of being a bank. But they still are a lending institution, and when you're looking at trying to establish a public bank in your area, one of the better places to look is who's already doing the lending. Because they're already used to all the regulatory requirements and all the different kinds of operational issues that it takes to run a bank and run it well. So in Vermont, for example, we tried to get legislation passed that would give the Vermont Economic Development Authority a banking license rather than creating a state bank from the ground up. Student loan facilitators, in, in Vermont, that's the Vermont Student Assistance Corporation, and they facilitate the loans for the students in our state with help from the federal government. Internal infrastructure lending, that's something Mike talked about in North Dakota, and it's something I actually had the city of Randolph in Vermont do when we ran a landfill and made a several million dollars profit on that landfill. We used our own internal funding for infrastructure construction, paying the city capital fund back with the money we had loaned it from the city landfill fund. So that kept the capital fund alive by having the interest coming from the landfill fund pay into that capital fund, and it offered the city a much lower cost way of building infrastructure. A lender of last resort for housing and businesses. That was another service that I provided as the community development director in Randolph that we got grants from the federal government to do. Again, if you're already offering that at the city level and you have those lending policies and programs in hand, that might be a good partnership to work out if you're trying to establish a public bank at the city level. The North Dakota model, which you've heard a lot about today, is something that Many of us on our team call the big enchilada. That's actually the biggest kind of public bank out there, and it's really quite a large undertaking. You can take on public banking with less than that to make it work for your community. And it's important to think about all of the different types of lending that you want to do and what the mission of your bank is before you start down that road. There's also other possibilities. We've heard about the German savings bank model, the postal bank model. All of these are other types of banking and lending services that can be provided by the public. Now the economic impacts that you're going to study will also depend on what you want as the mission for your bank. Here in Santa Fe, if you're doing an economic impact study and the data that you're using comes from the county level, it's actually going to be difficult to accurately estimate what the economic impact on a grand scale might be. But if you're also going to be doing one thing in Santa Fe, for example, to build renewable energy generation facilities that would provide revenue, another source of revenue, into the city coffers, that would be another type of lending and economic impact that you would have to evaluate in addition to the overall impact on jobs and crops. I'm running a little low on time. But this is another list of things that you want to look at when you're trying to consider what your economic impacts will be. If you're going to model, again, county level data is available. If you're going to use infrastructure, some of the impacts will be the avoided cost of the lending. And obviously, additional revenues from things like housing, energy, and student loans might be something to consider. In Vermont, 
we did a study like this and we found that over 2,500 jobs would be created for the public bank, adding over $340 million to the state's gross domestic product. Not a trivial impact in a state the size of Vermont that only has 600,000 people. Now once you're done with your studies and you've decided, yes, we can do it, and this is how we're going to do it, you need to figure out where you're going to get capital to start the bank, where you're going to get the deposits to start the bank, how are you going to raise the money to do it. This can come from things like grants and bonds. It can come from some form of private investment in some cases. Unrestricted assets that are already on the book of your lending institutions. We found in Vermont, for example, that VITA and VSAC's unrestricted assets were sufficient already to capitalize a bank. So we already had the available capital to start the state bank. We did not need to issue new bonds or raise new sources of revenue. Governance issues are also critically important. We've heard a lot about that, how here in New Mexico it would need to be really well established that this is a professional organization run by banking professionals and that there would be a fair, fairly serious firewall between the elected officials and the banking officials. And that's just one of the governance issues you need to consider when you're looking at establishing a public bank. Who are the board of directors? How does the public set the mission of the bank? What are the professional bankers that you're going to be employing? What are the codes of ethics that you'll be using? And where are the regulations and, lo and local mandates that you're going to impose on this bank? Finally, you need to prepare a real good plan for how to implement the bank and, and how to get it up and running. A business plan, an operations plan, a plan to manage all of the risks that the banks have to manage, if that's the kind of bank that you're going to do. What are the steps to making that plan a reality? The operational questions are serious, and the risks are serious. You get the benefits of a public bank, but you also have to manage the risks of running. And I've listed here all the risks that bankers are trained to manage. There's the credit risk, the liquidity risk, the interest rate risk, there's concentration risk, market risk, operational risks, regulatory risks, all of these are things that in the past have caused banks to fail. You also think, have to think through how you're going to staff it, what the operations are, what software you're going to buy. All of those questions need to be answered. So with a business plan, with a legal plan, an implementation plan, a management and reporting plan, and the idea that you're going to do this in an iterative way. So like in Vermont, where we've already transferred over $50 million from the treasurer's accounts in data for economic development and energy lending, and they're doing it in a very stepwise, deliberate fashion, you can change your mission, you can change your focus as you learn from the process of running the lending and the banking operations. So having a regular citizen's report card on the kinds of lending that have been done, having a public debate about the mission of the bank, all of these things are ways in which you can make these public institutions serve your needs most effectively. So that's the end of my presentation. I would like to open up the questions.